Hi, this is Janet Simmons and welcome to the second video in module two of UOIT's assessment for adult learning in a digital context. In this video, we will examine some of the terminology we will use throughout the course. We will begin with the analysis questions and then end with the synthesis questions. In between, we'll look at summative assessment, formative assessment, and we'll also look at the diagnostics and pre-assessment and then briefly, we'll wrap up with an understanding of the difference between assessment and evaluation. There are two analysis questions for this video. Do assessment and evaluation mean the same thing to you? Also, how does the various functions of assessment connect with the terminology? There are many confusing terms used related to assessment and, depending on the source, you may find the terminology varies or sometimes is even conflicting. It's important, however, to know the key terms within the context of the course. We will also build upon these concepts as the course progresses. What do you think assessment means? Your answer depends on the context in which it is used. Perhaps you first think of course grades or achieving a professional designation. But if you consider the ultimate goal of assessment within learning environments, we can look at the assessment as a process of collecting information about student learning. Take a look at how Alberta Assessment Consortium refers to assessment. What words from this definition were the same as you used? Simply put, assessment is collecting evidence of student learning. In very general terms, we will refer to assessment as gathering evidence of student learning. There are different types of assessment, such as summative and formative. Summative assessment refers to measuring student learning or skills acquisition or academic achievement at the conclusion of a defined instructional period. For example, in the past, you may have had to write a test at the end of a particular unit of learning. At the end of a team project, your instructor and peers will measure your learning using pre-established criteria and descriptions. These are examples of summative assessment. Formative assessment, however, provides information or feedback for the learner and instructor about the student's achievement in an ongoing manner. This could be informal or formal. For example, if an instructor or student poses or responds to questions for clarification, Hopefully the information the question elicits provides feedback for the learner and the instructor. Or, for example, at the end of a class, the instructor may ask students to provide the muddiest point as a ticket out the door or exit strategy. Students then either share verbally or in writing the most challenging or confusing part of the class. This then provides information for the instructor and students regarding evidence of student learning. And more importantly, this valuable information allows for the instructor and or students to address the muddiest areas and hopefully facilitate deeper understanding. Diagnostic or pre-assessment happens at the beginning of the learning experience. For example, in the first two videos of the course, you were asked to consider or jot down your understandings of various concepts. By having you explore your understandings, the instructor and students have information of current understandings. This information then is hopefully used to guide the learning experience. It's easy to get summative and formative assessment confused. This table will give us a clearer understanding of the two terms. Summative occurs at the end of an instructional period, such as a module. Formative assessment is used to identify learning gaps. Not all assessment is for grades, particularly if it's formative. For example, a low mark assignment or test is formative, while a higher stakes test at the end of a semester is summative. Finally, formative assessment occurs throughout the course or class, but summative assessment occurs at specific points throughout the course and at the conclusion of the course. There are some similarities. Both are used for student feedback and are used to assess student learning. From the instructor's perspective, formative and summative assessment is often used to adjust future lesson plans and is also used for course planning. Unfortunately, assessment and evaluation are often used interchangeably. As we see with these two definitions, evaluation refers to making a particular judgment for grading or reporting purposes.
Arguably, evaluation could be another way of describing summative assessment. For the purposes of this course, we will not use evaluation and assessment interchangeably. Rather, we will refer to the various types of assessment, which really reflect their underlying purpose. But we will elaborate upon these topics in subsequent videos. Let's recap to ensure a clear understanding of the terminology. Assessment refers to the gathering of evidence of student learning. We can gather evidence in summative or cumulative manner at the end of a particular period of learning, or we can gather evidence of student learning in an ongoing manner that is used as evidence to ensure subsequent learning experiences. Diagnostic or pre-assessment can be considered a form of formative assessment. However, evidence of student learning is usually gathered at the onset of a learning experience. Evaluation, on the other hand, refers to making a judgment of some sort, usually for reporting purposes. Some argue that evaluation might be considered a form of summative assessment, depending on the context of the learning experience. Formative and summative assessment come in many varieties. We will cover many of them in the course, and you may even discover others as you look for information to include in your PBL scenarios. During this course, you will likely question many assumptions you currently have about assessment, and it will give you a different perspective from which you can reflect upon your teaching, facilitation, and instructional design philosophies and practices. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.